Today I want to deal with the topic entitled, We Are Not Condemned. We Are Not Condemned. Alright, in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2, I want to just read the following. And I'm going to highlight two major issues today. So please just take note and uh, please take in notes if you are taking any notes because this morning is a very, very important session for you. And it says this, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, all right, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, so I just want to take this thing one step further quick. It says this, There is uh, therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, there's two things I want to highlight through the scripture. Number one is this. Is Satan has no right whatsoever to condemn you of your past. Anything that you've done in the past, if you've asked God to forgive you, you are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Satan has no right to remind you of your past. You know, we always have this thing of saying, if the devil reminds you of your past, you need to remind him of, your, of his future. You need to remind him of where he's actually going to end up and where he's going. But the issue is this, is so often... You want to do something for God and the devil will remind you of your past. Say, you're not good enough. You've done this thing wrong. Or you've had a fight with your spouse or your kids or something. And you end up feeling condemned and you feel like, listen, I can't actually do something. I want you to know that there is no condemnation whatsoever if you are born again. All you have to do at that point is say, God, please forgive me for any action that I've done that is wrong. And the minute you say that, God immediately forgives you and there's no condemnation. Satan has got no right on your life. All right, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. The second issue of the condemnation is the fact that you should be condemned to death. All right, if you are not a Christian, we have a right and a legal right to end up in hell. Why? Because we, our natural inclination is to do wrong. Come on, everybody sits down and goes, no, we, that doesn't happen. Well, let me tell you something. Take any child. Why is it that we spend all our energy teaching children to do the right thing and not teaching them to do the wrong thing? Naturally, they're going to go for something that's wrong. You know, it's like, it's like when, we, when my children were growing up. My children were really very good babies. And we thought we were never going to have any of this, you know, terrible twos and threes, you know, that type of story. We thought that was never going to happen because our children were really placid, loving children, babies. Man, when they turned two or three, it's like somebody else found them. And so then I realized something, that there is a thing where there, there is a natural world that influences us. I don't care who you are. And your natural in inclination is always going to go to something negative. All right? It's always going to go for something negative. And so what we need to know is this, is that God came and sent Jesus Christ to die for us and to break that thing off our lives. That there is absolutely no condemnation. You are not going to get a judgment from God that's going to get you to hell. All right, I want you to see verse 2. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, so in other words, in Christ Jesus there is life, there's not death, has made me free from the law of sin and death. So if I have Christ, I get life. If I have sin, I get death. The wages of sin is death. Okay, so it's important that we know this. So if I practice sin, it's going to bring death into my life. If I practice Jesus Christ and his principles, I'm going to release life on my life. And so you need to decide today which way you're going to go. That's why it says in verse 1, and I want you to take note of this. It says this, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ who do not walk after the flesh. In other words, you are not just doing things in the natural. 
the world's way of doing it, the logical way of doing it, the fair way of doing it. But those who walk according to the, flair, uh, to the spirit, what does that mean? It means according to the biblical principles. If I apply the biblical principles, there is absolutely no stronghold in my life. And if there is, I repent and God re uh, releases me from it straight away and Satan doesn't get a foothold into my life. And so today I want us to understand the two areas of condemnation. Number one, if you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to heaven. There's not a judgment on you ever saying that you're going to hell. How do I end up in hell as a Christian? You have got to renounce Jesus Christ flat out and turn your back on him and say, I want nothing to do with him. And deliberately do everything you can to get him to hell. That is how severe it has to be. Right? But when the other one that's a bit more subtle is where Satan reminds you of your past all the time, or even two days ago or an hour ago, and said, you're not worthy to stand up and do something because this isn't right, or you've sinned here. Yeah. You need to understand that the devil is a liar. All you have to do is ask God to forgive you, then you are worthy to minister. You are worthy to release the anointing, bless people, do whatever God's calling you to do. Now, why am I teaching on this? Because this is a trick of the devil. You see, when we're ready to go and do something, you are going to end up in a situation where you are going to have to deal with your heart. So I want you to know that this is how the devil works. Does he work like that with me? Yes, too. There are many times when I've ended up having to stand up on a pulpit or come and minister where I've just had a fight with my wife or my family. Now, I have to deal with that. I have to sit down and say, God, please forgive me. Cleanse my heart for anything that I've done wrong. You go, oh, you guys fight. Yes. We are just like any other family. And so do we have issues? Yes. Are we working on them? Yes. And so there are many times where you get in a situation where you want to do something good and you have to deal with this condemnation in your heart. There are many times. But you have to know how to deal with it. Because you take the scripture, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, who walk after the Spirit. God, I ask you to forgive me for any wrong that I've done. Immediately you're cleansed and ready to go. Of everything. And God removes that transgression as far as the east is from the west. That's why I chose that scripture for this morning. All right, he takes it far away. They're not even close. You are the one that holds on to it. And the devil is trying to use that to con us to stop us from helping somebody else. And so saints, I want to help us today. Do not let the devil condemn you. Do not allow him a foothold in your life in any manner of means. In Jesus' name. Alright, so today, as we come around the table, I want you to take your communion. And I want you to sit down and take the elements and to celebrate with me today. All right, that Jesus Christ has paid the price once and for all, that there is no condemnation. There's absolutely no reason why I can't pray for somebody and help somebody else. And this is what I'm excited about, because the church of Jesus Christ is starting to stand up. This is why I'm probably the most excited about Wednesday evening Zoom sessions. Why? Because I'm seeing the body of Christ starting to pray for each other and physically stand in the gap for one another. Man, I'm telling you what, the reports are phenomenal. And you are going to see how fast those people are going to grow spiritually because they're actually doing something. You are going to see how people are going to stand up. We are going to have leaders raised up across this nation because they are practicing their gifts. It's one of the most incredible platforms and methods that I've ever seen in ministry where people can actually start ministering to each other. I'm really so, so excited. In fact, I'm actually believing that that's one of the, the new modern day pillars of developing ministry. Because it's such an awesome place where people can actually stand in the gap for each other. But today, I want you to take communion. And as we take communion, we are going to thank God that there is no condemnation in my life. Anything that I've done wrong right now, God will forgive me. 
anything that's part of my past, I'm telling you right now, it is over. There is no condemnation if I am a Christian and Satan is lying to you. Okay, so let's, let's pray together. Lord, I just thank you that as we come before you, we thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate the fact that there is no condemnation in our lives. We are free. And Lord, I thank you right now that every time Satan comes to lie to us, that we will stand and turn it around in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you are moving in our lives in Jesus' name. And Lord, that each one of us are going to flow and do what you are calling us to do. And Lord, we ask you to forgive us for any wrong that we have done, any thought, intent, or word spoken. Lord, we ask you to forgive us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we take communion right now, we celebrate the fact that we are free and we are ready to give. You see me, we are ready to listen. We're ready to minister wherever you want us in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that we will hear your voice clearly and do what you're telling us in the name of Jesus. In the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and broke it. He said, this is my body that was broken for you. He took the cup and said, this is my blood that was shed for you. The body was broken for your physical, emotional healing. The blood was shed for your salvation, your protection, and your provision. And so right now, I want to just encourage each and every one of you. Do not let the devil lie to you. You are worthy. You are a son and daughter of the Most High God. There is no condemnation whatsoever in your life. You go and do what God has called you to do because of the price that was paid. So let's partake together. Lord, we just come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we are free of any condemnation. And Lord, right now we pray for physical healing. We command every symptom in our body to go in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that we are healed by the power of God and we release the dunamis power of God in our lives right now. We thank you, Lord, that your word says that the Spirit of God that dwells inside of us quicken our mortal bodies and we are healed. We thank you, Lord, for emotional healing. We release the power of God over our soul in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you will help us deal with any unforgiveness, any resentment, any offense in Jesus' mighty name. <coughs> Holy Spirit, you come and work in our lives and bring us to the place that you have in Jesus' name for each one of us. Lord, I thank you for the victory right now and the testimonies that are coming in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, we are going to um, get into praying for our nation today. And I want to just thank you that as we stand together, you have no idea the power that when we stand together. Please, I want to remind you before I pray, if you, if you do not like our page, our Facebook page, please like our Facebook page so that every single time we post something, you are notified so you know when we're going live. But secondly, Please, I want to encourage you, when you get the WhatsApp, if you're part of the groups, we are relying on you to go and spread the word. The testimonies that are coming across the nation, um, the, the word coming back to us is phenomenal. Why? Because the saints are helping spread the gospel. This is truth. This is stuff that can change people's lives. And as we do that, it will be the most strangest people that will sit down and suddenly you'll pick up and go, but that person's also following and that person's actually doing. One of the things that is exciting me is the amount of people actually practicing what we are being taught. Okay, and that is going to change the nation, not information, the people doing what God says we must do. So we will keep on providing the principles. I need you please to spread the word. Okay, so share every feed. Every time you're on, share it. Like the Facebook page, but also the WhatsApps. When they come, just keep sending them. I want to thank those that are downloading the app. I see that it's really going to assist you. I believe in it. We're going to make some changes to it. And then we're going to go for the iPhone. Okay, we're going to put it onto Apple. But I want us, please, we are a family. And the issue is we are fighting for South Africa. All right, we are fighting for South Africa. And so as we do that, the more Christians come on board and start praying, 
the stronger the anointing. We two or more agree upon one thing, it shall be established in Jesus' name. All right, so let's pray over our nation together. Lord, we come before you and thank you, Lord, that we as believers can stand united today. We thank you, Lord, for our economy. We thank you for the blessing of the Lord to be made manifest across our nation. Lord, we thank you for every sector. We thank you, Lord, that everywhere we go, we will see the blessing of God being made manifest. Lord, I pray that as we go into our businesses, that we will establish the altars. We will stand strong. We will release the word of God. And as we do, angels will go forth to minister on our behalf. Lord, we thank you that every business will prosper because we are there. Lord, as we release the word, I thank you that the power of God will be seen in every company in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now for your protection over every individual that is working. Lord, I pray for every Christian right now that they will have the word of the Lord, the wisdom of God. Lord, they will carry the power and the anointing that you have for each one of us. And Lord, that we will go out and make the difference in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for the protection of every single person, every essential worker. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that this virus will die and dissipate and be non-existent in our nation in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for our economy. We pray for wisdom. We pray for creative ideas. Father, I pray that every believer will go out on an assignment and carry the anointing and be a light and be the salt. Father, I thank you right now that as we stop the decay, there will be the blessing of God wherever we go in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for our leaders today. We pray for President Ramaphosa and the cabinet and our local municipalities and our mayors and the, and the members of parliament and Lord, our, our uh, members um, of local government. Father, we pray right now that every single uh, councillor Every single member of parliament, every leader, Father, I pray that they will be under the subjection of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that you will lead them, guide them, give them wisdom, show them what to do. Father, I pray right now for even the finance minister when they've got to reshuffle finance now. Father, I pray that there will be a godly intervention and Lord that you will lead this nation in where you need to go. Lord, we call on the prophetic word that within four months, this economy will be restored in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Folks, let's get to our declaration in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, Increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, and battles won that I did not have to fight. All because of the blessing and the favor of the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. I want to tell you right now, saints, you have the authority. You have the power. Don't let the devil lie to you. Go and do what God is calling you to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.